Welcome back, I'm Brent Meredith. HIV diagnoses are disproportionately high among young African American males, especially those who engage in sexual activity with other men. Last year we told you about a $1.5 million Vanderbilt University study addressing this trend. Here with me again tonight to update us on this important research is lead investigator of the study and professor in the Department of Human and Organizational Development at Vanderbilt University's Peabody College of Education and Human Development, Dr. Sandra Barnes. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you. That is a mouthful. So. <laughs> Let's get started because I know we've got a lot to cover. For anybody watching tonight or uh, that has that didn't see our first talk or can't remember a year ago, give us a little background on where on, on how this got started. Well, basically, this is a five-year study, as you mentioned, uh -huh. that is uh, emerged based on my interest in the the ways in which poor working class black, white, and Hispanic persons have been adaptive and resilient across time. Mm -hmm. And so from that, I became interested in organizations that provided services for such groups. From there, I became interested in HIV, AIDS, and poverty as it affected marginalized people. And, and so this particular project is a culmination of my interest in how marginalized groups are, are savvy and adaptive and resilient. And so I'm interested in HIV as a pandemic in the black community, specifically for this target population. Okay, so we're caught up a little bit. I know that's a lot there to, to, to kind of catch up on in the last year, but uh, when you were here last, we talked about trying to reach a, a population of 5,000 uh, uh, people uh, uh, participating in the study. I'll spit it out. Um, so where are things standing now? How many people have you reached out to, and do you have any initial findings you want to share? Actually, there there are some dual objectives. Okay. And so the, the grant requires us to engage in an intensive prevention program with 50 young men from the target population every year okay. and then provide a variety of other services like um, HIV and hepatitis testing and counseling and and resource provisions for several thousand people a year okay. and so right now we, we've just started year three which is exciting mm -hmm. and we have completed the intensive part for about 60 70 young men so the first year was just getting everything acclimated and getting launched and so really we found the greatest success in year two moving into year three yeah and so for the intensive piece we're meeting our objectives and then also now we're branching out in terms of those indirect services I like you. HIV testing and, okay. and things of that nat nature well and I also understand that FISC is involved now exactly some, right, right? Exactly. how did that come about so we still have a really strong relationship with first response center and they were our original yeah. kind of sub awardee and so we're still working with them but FISC um, we have a relationship with them because of their long history working in the community and of course with the black the, um, with the black community in um, in particular and so basically our team um, our kind of boots on grounds team they're stationed at Fisk and this kind of makes sense if you think about our target population Completely. in terms of young African American men also college students from TSU from Vanderbilt and in the broader community yeah. and so this this is a really exciting collaborative nature um, collaborative project I should say where we're not only working with them in terms of the prevention program but in terms of collaboration on research sure. and so it's not just as if we're Vanderbilt's doing this piece and Fisk is doing that piece we're really trying to make sure that we are working together at each step along the way yeah it sounds like a perfect fit or perfect marriage if it you will. is it's exactly um, now I know when you were here last we also talked a little bit about how you were going to reach some folks and social media was going to be a big tactic and is a, a, a show <laughs> that that right. uses social media and a world that uses it now how were you able to use it and how, did you see success in, in finding exactly did you and exactly yes we're still continuing to use social media and again we know that this is, is very important in terms of that generation yeah. where iPhones are critical and so we're using our PSAs or our public service announcements or at least especially during the early part of year two to um, to attract and market the prevention program where we had certain members of the target population to share their stories mm -hmm. and to encourage young men to participate and so it's been quite successful um, another piece that's been really exciting is the um, the ability to use social media to continue to establish and strengthen relationships. Uh -huh. One of the, the kind of interesting and um, takeaways from the this, this study so far is that our prevention program is actually the beginning part of a relationship. And this is important because many times folks think that a prevention program, you go through the program and it's the ending. So you go through it. Right. But in actuality, our program just is the impetus. Really, yeah, um, the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. So after they've gone through this intensive weekend experience, then our team continues to interact with them in terms 
terms of, I mean, a variety of ways in terms of activities and events and coffee chats and again using um, social media to keep track of young men mm -hmm. as well as to continue to market the program. Now we've got a couple minutes left. I don't mean to break in, but no, I wanted no. to. Mm -hmm. One of the things I, I read in one of the uh, initial papers you published was kind of an interesting finding. Did you want to share a little bit about that? The family connection. Exactly. And so one one of the things that's important is the reality that the traditional family is still supporting some of the young men in the target population. Yeah. But then there are also non-traditional forms of family that emerge relative to social networks or the chosen persons. family we like to exactly. say. Exactly. Yeah. We call it fictive kin in sociology <laughs> where uh -huh. people are coming together to engage in family activities, those th domestic activities and, and relationships and friendships and getting things done, but they're choosing to come together um, because they are for practical reasons and also to provide support. And so that was a very important finding from this particular study, that people are again being adaptive and resilient yep, yep. to create not only their family, um, these non-traditional family setups, but also in terms of spiritual support. And, yeah. and there were just a lot Which of really it, it was comforting to me to, see, to hear that the family was a little bit more involved than what maybe we had originally thought exactly. in the support network. And this goes against the anecdotes that, yeah. again, the families it, the exactly. families have estranged um, members of the target population, and the church has estranged, they're estranged from the church. Just didn't find that out for the young men that we're working with. Before we have to go, I do want to make sure anybody watching tonight, how can they sort of help out? Is there any Thing they can do? Where can they go to find more? Can they be part of this study? Well, yes, we're definitely always interested in um, black young men 18 to 24 who okay. want to participate, okay. as well as if people want to get information about the program, they can contact me at Vanderbilt University. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, and we'll put some stuff up on social when we share this program, okay? All right, thank cool. you. Cool. Thank you for being here. Well, I really appreciate the update. Me. You're yes. of course. <laughs> uh, and when we come back, Chuck has your first look at Nashville and Harmony's holiday show. Stay with us.